Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me Channel. Today we will be looking at GCSE Chemistry Electron Shells. Now, this is an important topic because this topic forms a basis of many other topics that we will be studying. So, this is an important one today. So, first let's look at the atomic structure. First of all, we have oxygen here, which is an atom, and we have the atomic number here, and we have the mass number here. Now, atomic number, atomic number will give us the amount of protons that we have in oxygen. And this is important, because if we look at the structure of oxygen, or any atom for that matter, in the center of such an atom we have an atomic nucleus, which consists of protons with a positive charge, with their pluses here, and neutrons with a no net charge. Neutrons just carry mass but no net charge. So neutrons together with protons contribute to the mass number here. But that's not the most important thing. Today we're mostly concerned about the atomic number. So here we have eight protons. We have eight protons. Now, outside the nucleus, we have electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Electrons have negative charge. And unless, unless that atom is ionic, is, unless that atom is an ion, this one is not. This one is not ion. So unless that atom is an ion, the number of electrons will be equal to number of protons. And that is because their charges will balance out, giving us a zero net charge for the atom. So here we have oxygen with eight protons and eight electrons. So that's why, that's why the oxygen atom is with zero net charge. So this is the first important concept to understand because now we will move on to how these electrons arrange themselves. Because the way these electrons arrange themselves is not entirely random. They have a certain order that they are in and they arrange themselves in shells. They arrange themselves in electron shells, or also can be called um, electron levels or energy levels. Now, I'm going to be calling them electron shells. So, these electrons arrange themselves into shells, and in any sort of atom, they will fill the shell from the lowest to highest. So, for example, you know, if we have... Uh, if we have, say, I don't know, um, let's just go with oxygen again. If we have an oxygen atom, so we have an oxygen atom here, we have a first shell here. So that's the electrons with the lowest energy, the ones that don't have the energy to, to be able to break themselves free from the closest grip of the proton, from the closest attraction of the protons via electrostatic, you know, charge differences. So these ones have lowest energy and they are sort of closest to the nucleus of oxygen. So we would put those first. So we go, we would put those first here. They fill, they fill the first shell first and then we go on to fill the next shells. So we would fill this shell in, you know, like this. So we would fill this shell like this. Bam, bam. Here, here. There, and there. So that's how we would fill the oxygen atom electron shells. However, from the lowest, from the lowest level to the highest. So we were, we are filling them outwards. Now, the next thing to understand is that these shells, how do we fill these shells? How do we fill them? How many electrons? Because, because of the way these shells are structured, there is a specific number of electrons that can go in each shell. Now, in a first, in a first shell, 
we have two electrons. Now, in the second shell, we need to remember these. There, unfortunately, there's no way around it. You just have to remember it. In the second shell, we have eight electrons. In the third shell, we also have eight electrons. And in the fourth shell, we will have the rest. As far as you're concerned, we just put the rest of the leftover electrons in the fourth shell. That's how we fill these up. So this is very important to remember. I'm going to mark it right here for you. Okay, so now we know how to fill up these shells. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at uh, another more complex example. I'm going to move on to the next page. Like this. Okay, so let's look at calcium. So the first thing, if we wanted to draw electron shell for calcium, if we wanted to draw electron shell for calcium, we would have to first go to periodic table. So we would look at the calcium in periodic table. Now it would look somewhat like this. We would have a square like this. The name, there's a shortcut for it the symbol for calcium, Ca, and here we would have the atomic uh, number of 20 and atomic mass, the mass number of around 40, unless you have the table with decimal places. Okay, so now we look at the atomic number. Knowing this, knowing that we have 20 protons, we already discussed that calcium needs to have net zero charge. So we know that calcium needs to have 20 electrons to match its 20 protons. So now we need to throw these electrons into electron shells. Just allocate them basically. So first of all, we put Ca, we put the symbol in the middle. Normally you don't draw out the whole nucleus. Normally you just put the symbol of the atom in the middle and then you just start drawing the shells straight away. So first shell is right there, lowest energy, and here we have two electrons because as we as we said, as we said to fit in the lowest energy level and those two would have the lowest energy and that's why they're the closest because they cannot free themselves as much from the proton pool. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So now let's draw the rest. Let's put down here cumulative count because we need to keep count of these. So cumulative count right here. I'm gonna underline this in a box here. So after after filling first shell, so here we will have shell and here we will have number of electrons. Okay, so after filling the first shell we allocated two out of 20 total electrons that we need to allocate. Okay, now let's draw up the second shell. Second shell will have another eight. Second shell will have, I'm, I'm going to mark them here. Second shell will have another eight electrons, giving us a total of 10. So now let me just draw a second shell. Now, the second shell will have eight electrons, as we said, and how do we draw them? We draw these in pairs. We draw them like this. So we draw one here and one opposite. One here and opposite. And then we do the same on this plane. The reason why we bunch them up like this is 
in real life they wouldn't be like this in real life they would be all over the place but we bunch them up like this just to make it easy to just cam them up okay so here we have another 8 giving us a total of 10 in show 3 as we discussed we have another 8 giving us a total of 18 so let's draw up another shell another 8 like this just the same way and again bunched up like this just behind these guys makes it super easy to count them so now we have a total of 18 and now as we know we need to put the rest in the fourth shell so we got 18 we need to put in 20 so we got two left over and now we got 20 so the final shell will have just two. Okay, so now we have drawn the we have drawn the electron shell layout for atom of calcium. So this is it, this is how you do it, and what is the importance of all this? Why are we even bothering doing that? Well, the importance of this is that Atoms, atoms like to have their shells either full or empty. They like them either full or empty. So I'm just going to write it down because this is super important. Atoms like shells full or empty. So this is very important because this is the whole reason for why atoms react this is very important this because atoms react with each other to either fill up their shells or to empty their shells and that's why reactions even happen in our world and that also explains noble gases because noble gases already have a full outer shell and that's why noble gases are so unreactive so this is it for today guys, thank you very much for listening, I really appreciate it every time you watch these videos. If you want to stay up to date with daily videos on biology, chemistry, physics and maths and also some biomedical science videos, smash that subscribe button below. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, thank you again and see you next time.